the common tendency we're gonna be talking about here is for the individual that uh, tends to hit the return and then not get up and established. Um, that, and there's various variables here, but, but uh, I would say some of the main tendencies that I see is people hitting a return, looking to see how pretty their return is, not gaining real estate. Also too, hitting a return on their back foot uh, because they're not in the correct, uh, the correct position as they hit the return. Maybe, maybe they're uh, uh, cheating up too close to the baseline, not giving themselves enough space, not giving themselves enough time. Um, also too, another, another tendency is um, just not swinging out on the return, like bunting it, not, not getting enough extension, uh, or, or maybe not understanding that their weight and their energy needs to be going through the ball as they make contact. Yeah, I would say when we teach camps, I would say the 3.0 to 3.5 level, um, this is probably one of the best and meatiest topics for people to be able to use right away. We talk about implementation dip, meaning when we give advice, maybe it's a technique nugget, uh, but the idea of when you're making a change to your game, uh, it can take a little while, you're gonna get worse often before you get better. The return is maybe the exception to that. I think this is one of the areas where just planning ahead for what you're trying to do, whether it be court positioning or just understanding what type of natural stroke you have and how to use that. I think this is one of the best areas to get you playing some more consistent, better pickleball right out of the gate without, uh, without too much of the learning curve here. Uh, if you find that your opponents are very dialed into their third ball, you've got to ask yourself, am I hitting the same person? Is, 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 um, is, is Larry hitting all the third balls? Am I not keeping Steve honest? Um, is there not enough depth on my return where it puts pressure on the servers? Plain and simple, if, you, if the servers are very dialed into the, to their third ball, you gotta, you gotta ask yourself a few questions. Um, but know that consistent depth can cause inconsistency uh, on, on your opponent's third ball drop. Okay guys, uh, drill here is gonna be, uh, I'm acting as the teacher, Coach Kyle's acting as a student. As a teacher, my job is to be uh, serving. I'm, I'm gonna work on serving deep. That's always, that's always the game plan, but as I serve deep, I'm gonna work on also being very consistent. Uh, Coach Kyle's job in, the, in, uh, in this drill is he's gonna be working on half volleys. He's gonna be showing you the correct technique behind hitting a half volley return. Um, and he's gonna show you the correct footwork and the correct court positioning uh, after he hits his return. Um, so take a look here, uh, we'll, we'll serve uh, uh, 10 on the right, 10 on the left. He's gonna hit 10 half volleys on both sides as well, okay? It's gonna look just like this, here we go. Beautiful and trapped. So uh, I'm gonna have Kyle pause there, perfect. So I served, he hit a return, he floated it, kept things very short and sweet, gave himself some margin, gained some real estate. My job, uh, uh, when, when the ball comes back to me is to trap. When I trap, his court positioning should be up and established. So he can kind of gauge how fast or how slow he should be moving up uh, uh, based off of when I, when, I, when I catch him, okay? For my half volley return, just as I want to show you my setup here, um, notice that there's not a whole lot of space between where I'm setting up and the baseline, but I'm still giving myself a little bit of a buffer. To me, there's no point in being inside the baseline or perfectly right on it. We know that our opponents are trying to serve deep. I don't want anything pushing me back at all. So I wanna give myself just a little bit of a buffer, but I'm acknowledging that my technique has to be much shorter. I'm doing a lot more work with my legs, not much swinging going on here. And again, I wanna act like there's cones or there's wall, like a wall behind me. The last thing I wanna do is get pushed back by the serve to where I've gotta go backwards, control all of my momentum, and then go forwards. If I do that consistently, I'm going to be later, I'm only gonna get about mid-court before Tyson's already hitting, and I've lost my advantage because I'm not up at the kitchen line, okay? So um, even though I'm closer to the baseline, I still want a little bit of a buffer here for the half volley return. We'll show you the other type of return here in a second. Nice. Trap, he's up and established, very good. Okay, again, again, again. I'm trying to serve deep, give myself some height. Beautiful. Uh, and, and I would say Kyle's technique there, it's almost like a dink, right? It's very dink oriented. Um, but, you know, and instead of finishing at that first imaginary ball, maybe he's finishing at the second. Plain and simple, he's getting a bit more extension th than he would on a dink, okay? Again, adding some depth. Good, he's giving some some height and he's coming up. Let's do, let's do two more here. I'm gonna find that backhand side. Uh -huh. There it is, baby. Don't find there it too it well. Don't find it too well. 
<laughs> All right, uh, here we go. I think you've been working on here that left go. foot lift. Here we go. Uh, Backhand return. Ready? <laughs> okay, very good. Getting up in a step. <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay, let's go to the side. Okay. Okay. Same drill here, other side. Still trying to move it around. He's still taking half ollies and then coming directly in. Good, good. See how he's getting all of his weight, all of his energy going directly at the ball. Know that at lower levels, you are at a huge advantage by getting up and getting established first. And the percentage of points being won at lower levels on the returning side versus the serving side, it's like apples and oranges. So it is so necessary that you get up and get established after you hit the return. Here we go. Nice, good. Okay. And, and, and something, something that has to take place here. So as Kyle's hitting a return, Kyle's partner should, should honestly be be kind of, you know, facing like this. He has his eye on, on Kyle. He has his eye on the server. Plain and simple, uh, uh, this person is, is, is looking to poach if Kyle's in a bad spot. If Kyle finds himself hitting a return, he's late to coming up, and, and his opponents see blinking green lights on his feet when he's in that half-court transition zone, um, it would be a great time for his partner to slide over and then poach off of their drive, okay? And add that in. Here we go. Uh. Good, good. I like it. Get again, again, again. Serving. I can work on my serve here. Lift. Beautiful. See how he's staying nice and compact too. Uh, everything's a unit. He's not uh, making contact and then leaving. Everything all kind of works as one little piece. Here we go. Nice. Beautiful. Okay, drill here is going to be, Coach Kyle has now given himself some time. He's looking to hit his return and get established. I am serving here. I'm acting as a teacher. He's acting as a student. My job after I've served um, is to uh, have him come up, and then I'm going to be grabbing or, or trapping the third ball. And when I grab or trap, he should be up and established. So now I'm going to be working, guys, on more of what we call the bounding return. All this really means is that I'm taking more of a full backswing. For tennis players, people who like a lot of a longer, more of a fluid stroke, this might be a more natural return. The big thing to remember is once I line up in a particular area, I still want to act like there's cones or there's a wall behind me. I don't want to go further back in order to make this shot. So when I recognize that the ball's coming to me and I'm setting up, I'm gonna turn, swing all the way through, and transfer my weight from back to forward all in one motion. And as I transfer that weight, I'm just going to propel myself forward. Remember, the return is the one area where whether it's good, bad, medium, we're getting in and trying to get to that kitchen line every single time. So I don't have to wait to see how good or bad it is and then go. I can combine that weight transfer with me getting up to the net. Now, a big no-no is I'm talking about transferring the weight that's different than moving those feet through contact. So make sure that our feet are more stationary, that it's just a shift in weight, but we don't have a lot of activity going on with the lower body. Like it. Ready here? Okay, serving. Beautiful. Trapping, very good. Serve. Got his weight going forward. Beautiful. I like it, I like it. See how he's gauging? See how he's gauging his take back based off of how much time he has. If, he were, if I were to serve a little deeper and he has less time, he's gonna shorten. Uh, if he has more time, maybe I serve a little shorter. Uh, he's gonna really open that up and add some range of motion, okay? So just opening, opening the swing or closing the swing based off of the time. Okay, ready here? Good, nice. Back of the baseline, same thing. I'm gonna find that, find that backhand here. Good. Okay, again, serving. Nice. Trap. Nice. Good. <sighs> nice, good. Looking to get that return deep, uh, preferably back in the baseline. Baseline area. Nice, good. OK, 
Okay. Yes, good, I like it. I like it, I like it. Let's go a few more here. Forehand side, forehand side. Nice. Okay, last one here. Giving himself plenty of time. I like it, I like it.